Okay, so news in. I've just did a, a YouTube video on my other channel, Duran Rider Cycling Tips, about Team Sky Ineos running disc brakes. I'm also going to today's video. I'm going to talk about that. We're also going to touch on Dave Browsford uh, leaving Team Sky Ineos and uh, regarding his health issues, etc. So let's get into it. Let's first of all, we'll start with uh, the, let's talk about Dave. So Dave Browsford, he would say, I would I would say that he is the cornerstone. Of Team Sky, uh, Ineos. I just call them Team Sky because that's who they are, um, sponsor-wise. But it's the same. It's the same skeleton. It's the same base. It's the same chassis. It's the same framework, and it's all created pretty much. Mastermind Dave Browsford, British cycling etc. Correct me if I'm wrong. If I'm wrong in any of these points, please let us know down below. I'm always open to being wrong, and I love being corrected because I like putting out the best, most accurate information. So Dave has had some health issues, uh, he had some testicular cancer issues or prostate, something like that. Hopefully he can maybe change his diet, Dave. I'd recommend jumping my protocols, high carb, low fat vegan, so there you go, can't hurt. Do the best you can, also he's had some heart issues as well. We're not sure why that is, but again, my protocols are going to give you the best chance of anything, you know what I mean? It's just going to give you the best chance of anything. Doesn't make you bulletproof, but it's just going to increase the chances of survival of better quality of life. Dave, Br Dave Browsford, let's call him Davey Boy Dave, he is a go getter. All right? The dude has been in a cycle a long time. Correct from wrong, he was the guy who was at dinner with Dave Miller when Dave Miller got, got arrested by the Frenchies um, you know, back in was it 2003 or something. So Dave's been around a lot. He knows how cycling works, he knows how pro sport works. People often criticise, oh, Dave, you know, he's he's got the Dr. Freeman, the testosterone, the Jiffy bag, oh, it's doping. Look, man, all the big teams in pro sport, not just cycling, all the big teams, it's ran by drugs, all right? That's just how it is. That's not my opinion. That's just like, that's just fact, guys and girls out there. And if you believe it's possible to win the Tour de France or possible to win the World Cup Soccer or Wimbledon or the World Record Marathon, etc., you know, Boston Marathon, New York Marathon, London Marathon, if you believe it's possible to do that without any hormonal assistance, then you probably you probably get picked up at work by your mum at age 35. You probably, when you, your wife goes away to Vegas with the girls the girls weekend, she comes back with a massive hickey on, your, on her neck, and you go, what's that? What's on your neck, babe? She says, oh, it's, it's just a rash. It's just a rash from the uniform. It's just a rash from the, 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 the Vegas sun. Don't, don't worry about that, baby. Don't worry about that, baby. You know, you probably believe that. Like, you just, how naive do you want to be, right? So it's not just Davy Boy. It's not just Team Sky, etc., etc. It's just professional sport. It's business. And with professional sport comes drugs out the top, all right? You can definitely be a pro athlete clean. Look at the Bayern soccer team. Right? You think those transformations weren't with the assistance of Bayer? They got Bayer in the name, Bayern. Okay, drugs, people. It's drugs. Is there any surprise that big dollar athletes who choose to be that way, who choose to be under the pressure of sponsors, who choose it all, is there any surprise these people would take performance-enhancing drugs to performance-enhance their job that they're paid to do? based on their performances. <laughs> I was like, if you believe that you can do that stuff clean at that level, at the top, I'm not talking the bottle carriers, I'm not talking the, the bench warmer soccer players, I'm talking the champions, man. The guys that are getting sucked and fucked by the babes, you know, after the wins, etc. Alright? That's how it works, man. If you think that's possible, Natty, then you probably believe in Santa Claus. And I, I don't have any proof. Because, oh, show me the proof. I, I don't have any proof. No proof there at all. I don't have any proof that Santa Claus doesn't exist, all right? Maybe Jesus lives next door to you. Maybe these people just found Jesus, you know? <laughs> this is how it is. So when you're going to criticize Dave Browsford because there's drugs involved, but then you're going to cheer on, you know, Germany or whoever in World Cup soccer or whatever, like, you just, you're just tripping, bro. You're absolutely tripping, all right? You think that the Serena sisters or Serena brothers... Or, Think they're natty, like the the, the bulky one, the Mike, one, Mike Mike Tyson, you know, like it's drugs, man. It's drugs in sport. It's entertainment. Okay, I encourage drugs in sport. Actually, I shouldn't encourage it. I accept it, and I wish it would be more open about it, so athletes who choose to be professional level athletes at the top don't have to risk the health and stress of you know having to use dodgy stuff or black market gear or just be on the run all the time. You know, that's, that's it would be fun for a bit, but after a while it'd be quite stressful. Plus, the backlash, if you ever get caught, 
you know, if you get caught, all your sponsors drop you and pretend you, they never knew what was going on. When everybody at Nike, Oakley, Shimano, SRAM at the top of half an IQ point knows what's going on, okay? Wimbledon, tennis, you know, Reebok, Asics, Adidas, come on, man, you know, let's not be on naive here. So, so Dave has had some pressure and some stress, and he has some, you know, it, 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 he sacrificed a lot in the name of entertainment. All right. Professional sports is entertainment. All right. Funded by money to make more money. The bikes are made in China. Pinamelo is made in China. Trek made in China. Canyon made in China. The tennis rackets that you know these people use are made in China, etc. And they're sold for an insane markup. It's just it's professional sport is aggressive exercise funded by money to make more money. And it's fantastic in that it provides entertainment for people who, whose lives otherwise would be quite boring and mundane. It gives people something to talk about at work, at the job they don't like, because the guy got sperm jacked and now he's got to provide for his kids and it's blah, 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 blah. So it's professional sport is entertainment, all right? Don't sit more than that, all right? Don't get... Don't be like crying because the Livestrong bracelet you wore, which I said all along was just, you know, whatever... It's turned out to be not as pure and as clean and humble and wholesome and American apple pie as you thought. Drugs in sport. It's just the name of the game, okay? Oh, you think everybody's on steroids, Duran? No, no, not everybody. No, my mum doesn't take steroids. No, everybody's not on steroids. I'm saying the champions of the champions are taking steroids for that hormonal support and that red blood cell production that you're not going to get if you're playing all these soccer games and training in and out and doing all this crazy, inhumane stuff. Your body breaks down. Endocrinology wise, you just hormones start to crash, and you're just like, I need some, you know. But hey, you got another five soccer games to go in the next month or weeks or whatever, you know, you got to keep going. Boom, boom. You're basically a soldier, you're a corporate soldier, you know, MMA fighting. You know, you get punched in the head enough times, you stop producing enough testosterone, and then you got to maintain all this fitness and health and bone health, and you got a wife and kid. You, it's, 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 hormones are part of the name of the game, okay? Just saying, this is how it is. So, Davy Brown, I could talk. You know, for hours on this topic. But Dave Brailsford is going to be leaving Team Sky. I hope he's still there behind the scenes because obviously he's a man who knows how to uh, manage people, which is the biggest challenge, managing all different egos and personalities and beliefs and stuff like that. So he's good at managing that. It's going to be cutthroat, man. He's got these sponsors up top telling him how it is. And it's, it's, it's very stressful. So he has sacrificed a lot. So thumbs up to Davey Boy for... You know, the sacrifice you've put in over the years, you've given us a lot of good times with Team Sky, with Wigo and Froome and Egan and Garen and Port and you know, Michael Rogers, all that, just everyone in part of the deal. The highs and lows, it's been a, been a great ride and it continue, hopefully it goes on. Um, and Dave, I hope you yeah, get control of your health there and, and maybe try what I recommend nutritionally wise, you know, high carb, low fat, vegan, fruit, rice, sugar, steamed veg, the good stuff, you know, wheat bix low fat soy milk just give it a go you, you, your biomarkers will definitely improve let's go to stage 2 of the video uh, part 2 of the video stage 2 uh, let's talk about disc brakes so there's someone some clown you know and I'm I'm being nice about it some absolute clown I could be totally wrong but performance manager so we're going to give the riders the best technology we're going to give them disc brakes <laughs> There's not one single professional rider out there, world tour rider out there, who says, uh, uh, Daddy, can I, can I have disc brakes on my bike? I can't. These Jura Ace calipers, they don't stop well enough. Zero world tour riders are saying that. I, I wish the brakes were better. You know? I remember, you know, I won't mention names, but I remember a certain cycling team, a lot of professional riders, world tour riders, come to me in private and tell me stories. I don't, I might share the story a little bit, as long as it's not going to, you know, incriminate the writer who's told me. There's one story I can share, though. Um, I won't mention names or teams or names of product, but he, he says, I said, how's the bike going? Man, it's a good bike, but these brakes, these brakes are shocking. He goes, I don't know why they gave us these shitty brakes, you know. But, hey, you know, we're hard to use our brakes anyway, so it's not too bad. And he's a very, very successful world tour rider. Um, you know, he's telling me this, and, uh, and as I say, why are they putting these crap brakes on there? You know, they're just some cheap rim brake caliper brakes, I'm just like, this just doesn't make any sense. But then again, he's, he still had a very successful season that year, so the brakes weren't holding him back too much. But nobody out there in the World Tour is going, I've, I've only got Shimano calipers, can you give me something better? No one's, no one's complaining about that, okay? So the notion that the performance manager says, oh, we're giving the riders better technology, it's no, you're not. You're All you're doing is you're bending over 
you grabbing your cheeks, flirting them open, ready for that corporate fist <laughs> to just, you know, it's like, what, what, what's going on there? You know? And hey, if you're in that stuff, that's okay. But I'm just saying that as a performance focused person myself, disc breaks make zero sense in the world to Zero, zero, zero cents. All the noobs out there go, oh, but you can break better in the wet. Look at all the crashes that are happening because of disc brakes in the World Tour. Do you realize how fast these riders go? Unless you've trained with World Tour riders, and I have with over probably a thousand riders during Tour and Unders over the last 18 years, the, the speeds that some of these riders go down just in training is, is incredibly dangerous, it's incredibly risky, but they don't use their brakes much at all, all right? And when you do have to use brakes and you go on that speed, especially in the wet, those disc brakes can lock up so easily because they're on off. There's not much modulation. On the mountain bike, it's a bit different because you got just, the server way is different and you've got fat, fat tire. And it doesn't matter if your rear wheel locks up on the mountain bike or the gravel bike or the cyclocross bike. It's fun. If your rear wheel locks up or your front wheel locks up on the road bike, you're in dangerous territory. Right? And you just, just go and watch the Giro or the Velta in the wet. Even in the dry, these riders are disc brakes, just grab a normal amount of brake, and all of a sudden the rear wheel locks up, front wheel locks up, and they crash. That doesn't happen with rim brakes, because there's better modulation, there's better feel. This road disc at World Tour is very, very dangerous. Obviously, the riders can't really speak out about it too much, because of sponsors, but anyone can go watch the Netflix documentary of Movistar, and see how they're just trashing on the disc brakes. I guess this is stupid. I'm surprised that sort of went out there. But even that video wasn't deliberately trashing disc brakes like overtly. It was sort of around the bounce, you know. We're between the lines. So that's the deal there. So Team Sky going to disc brakes. It's, you know, you've got, got on the Ineos Grandiers, uh, Grandadiers Instagram page. And people are like, oh man, this is, this is the end of cycling as we know it. <laughs> but it is, uh, it's funny, but it's sad. And it's all first world problems. But it is sad to see Team Sky pretty much wrap it up now, you know, like, they had such a good run, this year was fantastic, they won more stage races than ever before, they won, you know, the Giro, they got third in the Tour de France, you know, and they had some bad luck with crashes, Garen Thomas, just, you know, had a lot of bad luck there as well, but, um, yeah, it's crazy, man, you know, all these noobs out there just trying to think, yeah, like, you know, yeah, it's, it's, it's new, the latest is the greatest, it's not, it's not, especially not in cycling. Especially not in cycling. But hey, it is what it is. Most people in cycling today buy new bikes, are pretty new to it. And so they just, they believe whatever the marketing agency tells them. Specialized or Cervelo, they just believe whatever's going out there. They say, look, Wout Van Aert, he won the Von Von Two stage on disc brakes. Do you think Wout Van Aert, cyclocross guru, needs disc brakes on his road bike? Do you think he'd really choose that when he used to race with cantilevers on his cross bike he preferred that because it was lighter and then the industry's going oh, you're going to ride disc brakes down you know like go and watch a muddy cyclocross race and see how many times you see Wout Van Aert use his brakes like you use your brakes you lose time that the person in cyclocross literally who has the most power and who uses the brakes the least all right holds speed through the corners rails it just you know wins okay wins so, yeah, just, again, most, but here's the thing, here's where the cycling market can get away with it. Most people don't ride at that level, they don't understand the physics. They just, they just believe the specialized marketing. And specialized started this whole ball rolling by paying Peter Sagan, correct me if I'm wrong, by paying Peter Sagan in 2019 Tour de France, a mad bonus saying, Peter, if you ride disc brakes every single stage, we'll give you an insane bonus. And Peter, being a professional athlete, I can't say no to that. And then it started from there, because Peter Sagan back then had so much pull, so much marketing pull, and uh, yeah, understandably, and, and you know, he, he, he deserved that and got that, but yeah, that's what started the whole thing, and then now, poof, disc brakes, oh, disc brakes are better, you know, you, you save, I don't have to spend $2,000 on carbon rims anymore, because I can just use my rotors, I can just chew through rotors, 60 pounds each, or whatever, $60 each, if you're paying more than $200 USD for high-end carbon rim, you're paying way too much plus you have the expense of have to actually buy a whole new bike if i want a sub seven kilo disc brake bike i have to spend about twenty thousand dollars australian 15 to 15 to 20 grand to get a sub seven kilo with pedals disc brake bike if i want a sub seven kilo with pedals rim brake bike i can get one for a thousand bucks you know thousand bucks 
give or take Australian second hand marketplace mint condition SL three four five etc. Shram red, you know, sub seven kilo, thousand bucks mint condition. So you know, it's just, it doesn't make any sense anymore. But anyway, that's the video, Dave. Hope you do well, mate. And uh, in terms of disc brakes, just yeah, wow. Anyway, end of a, end of a great era.